bringing the people behind our food to life. So today we're making bagels. Um, as bakers, both of us, we can pretty much bake any kind of bread we want at home, but because it is a lot of effort, we tend to focus on the types of breads that are hardest to find in our local bakeries and grocery stores. Bagels are a real treat for us. It's one of our favorite breads, and so we've worked pretty hard. And we can't hard. get any good East Coast bagels yes. here on the West Coast. boiled, real authentic East Coast bagels. So we've worked pretty hard to get this recipe workable for a weekend bake. Yeah, we've got it down to now where it's just under 24 hours. You can basically start it on like Saturday morning. And uh, when you get up on Sunday morning, all you have to do is proof the bagels and uh, boil them and bake them. So um, Nicole's measuring out the ingredients for what we call a pre-ferment. A pre-ferment is when you hydrate um, a considerable portion of the flour with most of the water, in this case, that's actually going into the recipe, and a teeny bit of yeast. And you mix that up, and this basically makes a pretty stiff dough. And Italians like to call this, um, this type of preferment a biga, which is basically just a stiff uh, preferment of a portion of the dough. Yeah, Americans, we, we tend to say starter, no matter mm -hmm. if we're talking about an actual wild yeast sourdough starter that you made yourself that took months to get active, or just a simple preferment to give it more flavor. Um, preferment's the universal term, mm -hmm. but around the world, there are many, many different words for it. And you do this for a, for a number of reasons. For flavor, it also really helps. Bagel dough especially is a very stiff dough and it's kind of hard to knead. Um, we're gonna make this recipe entirely by hand. Um, it's usually made commercially in a big heavy duty mixer, but I think it would blow out your home mixer if you tried it at home, so that's why we're making it by hand. Um, and actually hydrating the flour and giving it some time to rela uh, rest and relax and to allow the gluten to develop makes it a lot easier to actually knead. It's a lot less work. And we're using instant yeast, the technical term is instant active dry yeast, um, which you might find in the supermarket under trade names like Rapid Rise or um, Fast Acting. And it's perfect for making breads because you mix it right with the flour. It doesn't have to be proofed in water beforehand so you can see if it's active or not. It's just ready to go. And tell them about the water. And the water, if you're using uh, yeast that's dry, needs to be pretty warm. And I have this at about 120. You don't want to go too hot. 140 kills yeast. And if it's under 100, you're not warm enough so that it can rehydrate properly, which means you may not get a good rise out of it. So that's very important to have warm water. And, uh, and our try. flour um, here is, um, this happens to be King Arthur uh, bread flour. Um, bagels are made with bread flour. It has a very high protein content in the flour. Um, that actually allows you to develop a really strong gluten network in, in bread. Um, makes it a little difficult to knead uh, because the hydration level is so low. It's, um, it's, you'll see, it's going to be pretty, pretty stiff. Um, the other thing that Nicole is using is barley malt syrup. Um, the yeast like to have just a little bit of sugar in some form to um, snack on and get to going. And um, they seem to really like um, the barley malt. You could also, if you can't find barley malt syrup, which can be a little hard to find, you can also use honey. Um, you could even use molasses. Um, and in a pinch, you could actually just use straight sugar. Um, but I think this gives an actual really nice sort of malty sweetness to the finished bagel. It does smell vaguely a little bit like molasses, mm -hmm. just lighter. So it has more flavor. Okay, so do you want to mix this now that I got it all weighed up for you? Sure. There you go. So this is our water and uh, we have the yeast in here with the flour and this is the water and the um, barley malt and we're just going to add all of your wet ingredients to all of your dry ingredients. The thing I have to say about making bagels compared to other breads is it, even though there are a lot of steps if you read the recipe, you're really guaranteed success because when you're making most bread at home. The trick is to not knead and keep adding in a lot of flour. And the beauty about bagels is you're trying to add in the flour. Yeah, it's so a it's really a nice, easy to handle dough. It doesn't get sticky. It's less frustrating. The result is perfect because of that. Whereas I think sometimes people are disappointed when they make sandwich bread at home, but the next day it seems dry. Well, part of that reason is, is if you add even two tablespoons too much flour, it changes the texture of the bread the next day. I mean, flour really does absorb a lot of liquid. Think about making gravy. I mean, two tablespoons of flour when you're making gravy can thicken a huge amount of sauce. So it's pretty powerful. So this, I usually just sort of stir it together with the spoon to get it to come together a little bit. And then I have this nifty uh, white rubber spatula that I just sort of squash it around a little bit more. And all I'm doing is incorporating most of the dry bits of flour in there. And when I get it pretty much in there, I just take it out on my little pie board and you can see that there are um, still a whole bunch of little dry 
pieces of flour here. So I'm just going to briefly knead it. And I'm not kneading it really to develop structure at this point. All I'm doing is incorporating all of the dry bits of flour and the yeast and everything to just make a nice, nice smooth mixture. And this pre-ferment, once we get all of the flour in there, is just going to um, sit on the counter in a bowl and it's going to proof uh, at room temperature for about two hours. Yeah, it gives it time for the yeast to really wake up and take action. Um, later, we're going to put it in the refrigerator. That way, this will be an overnight dough, which is fantastic. It gives you a lot of flexibility so that you can complete bagels the next morning when you really want them. And it is pretty flexible. I mean, we've given really specific times on, you know, what time you're supposed to start and move to this stage and this stage. But it's really pretty flexible. I mean, because you do have it in the refrigerator for so long, it basically stops or goes very slowly uh, in its development. So you have a lot of leeway if you, you know, have to take the kids out and go to the park and you're an hour off on your schedule, it doesn't make that much difference. Um, and this, you can see this dough is not the least bit sticky. No, so, it's not. So, I mean, it's not like it's crying out for more and more flour. We're having to push, push the dough into the flour to get all the flour to go and be absorbed. So, um, it's a nice dough to work with because of that. So, you're not trying to actually get it to be smooth and shiny if you were like making a conventional bread dough. You're just trying to get all the dry bits in there. That's what's really amazing. I mean, standard bread is probably about 63, 65% water, and bagel, 52, 55. So when you've got it there, and I've probably been kneading for probably about what, three minutes, three minutes to get most of the stuff in, it's going to still look a little um, broken on the surface. It's not going to be smooth and shiny. It's just going to be kind of a big blob of dough. And then we're just going to put it in a bowl cover it and leave it on the counter at room temperature to let it rise for about two hours. This is our pre-ferment that we made this morning. Um, it sat out on the counter for two hours, then we went and did something else and stuck it in the refrigerator for a while. Now we're back and we're going to uh, make our final dough. So this is the biga. What I have here is um, a little bit of additional bread flour, four ounces of bread flour. And here I have two tablespoons of water, two and a quarter teaspoons of salt, and an extra teaspoon of the barley malt syrup. Um, I'm just dissolving the salt in the water so it's easier to get into the dough. Same thing with the barley malt. And the reason we don't add the salt up front is that it tends to stiffen the structure of the dough, plus the yeast just really don't like it to be in contact with the salt at that point. So we are going to add everything together. I'm going to mix it up a little bit in the bowl first, and then I'm going to take it out onto the table and knead it. And you'll see it's a really, really stiff, hard dough. And um, it takes a while. It's not hard to do. It just takes a while of you just standing here and getting the ingredients together. So here we go. And your salt will have settled a little bit if you let it sit there. So I just sort of dissolve it with my finger a little. And all I'm doing is I'm just sort of reaching in with the scraper. And you can just do this with your hand or you can do it with a spoon, whatever you have on hand. And just trying to mix in as much of the flour as I can get in the bowl. I'm not going to get it all in there by any means, um, but I can get a fair amount of it in the bowl, which just makes it a little neater so that you don't have flour flying around your kitchen while you're kneading. And then once I've got a fair amount of it in there, I'm just going to take it out on to the board. And then it's the same thing that we did this morning, only the dough is even a little stiffer now than it was this morning. So I'm turning, I'm picking up the corner of the dough with one hand, I'm sort of folding it over and I'm pressing with the heel of my hand against the board like that. And it's going to look really ugly and shaggy and gnarly for a while. That's just the way it is. Don't be worried about it. And I'm using a pretty fair amount of uh, force to press down, sort of pushing off the balls of my feet. How long do you do this? Um, you need it for roughly 10 minutes. And 
what you're looking for um, when you're kneading the dough is you're trying to absorb all of this additional flour. And once you've got all of the flour absorbed into the dough, which is sort of the first half of your kneading process, that'll be about the first five minutes of kneading, um, once you get that all in there, you're going to just keep kneading the dough, and what's going to happen is it's going to start to get smoother, more elastic, and develop a little bit of a shine on the top. Not a lot of shine, because it's a very low hydration dough, but you'll get a little bit. So, as you can see, the dough is starting to look a little smoother, but I still have this additional flour to get in. As you keep kneading it, what happens is the outside of the dough from being dry starts to get slightly sticky, so you can just scoot a little bit of the flour over there and keep kneading the dough ball onto that little bit of flour and it will absorb it gradually. The punch down is just to occasionally you just want to sort of give yourself a nice big flat sticky surface to start from again and then I just pull from one corner over and that's just developing the gluten network in the dough and getting everything distributed nicely in there. I've got all the flour pretty much incorporated in the dough. It's starting to develop a little bit of a shine. You can see there's a little bit of a shine on the dough. It's starting to feel smooth. Um, sort of the classic thing is it feels, feels like a baby. So it's starting to feel kind of silky on the outside. It's developing a skin on the outside. You can see that it's much, much less shaggy than it was before. And it has amazingly absorbed all of that flour. And it seems sort of odd to think of a dough that needs that much flour. And it's very unusual. Bagels are really the only dough that I know of that is this stiff. And we like to make the dough by hand, just as I've, I think I said before, because um, you can make it in the mixer, but you need a really powerful mixer to do it. And um, th there's the possibility that you might hurt your mixer, because this is a pretty stiff dough. If uh, this seems a little strenuous for you and you don't want to do quite this much kneading, you can always start the dough in your mixer and take it out and finish it up by hand. You can let it go for about oh, three or four minutes in your mixer and then just take it out onto the table and finish it, which will cut down on your time and your exercise. But it's kind of soothing. It's just kind of soothing to sit here and actually touch something that's alive like that. So this dough is feeling really good now. It's nice and silky, smooth. So I'm just going to give you a look at it. You can see that the top is looking really good there. It's, got, it's kind of springing back. It's smooth. It's got some little blisters on the top. You can see that it's, you know, kind of stretchy if you pull it up. So it is done. We're going to put it in our oiled, clean bowl, and um, we are going to cover it with our little sheet of plastic wrap. And this is going to go into the refrigerator overnight so that you can make bagels first thing when you get up on Sunday morning. So this is our finished dough. Um, we put it in the refrigerator last night. It's been proofing very slowly and coolly all night. That's allowing it to, to develop a really nice mature flavor that you wouldn't get in just a straight through dough that you didn't refrigerate at all. And now what we're going to do is, we, well, when we got up in the morning, the first thing we did was we took our dough out and we let it warm up on the counter for about an hour. And so now we're going to um, divide the dough, which Miss Nicole is going to do. All right, there you go. 12. 12 bagels. All right. We'll see how evenly I can do that. And um, a little stickier now that it's been sitting out night. It's totally different from the, uh, the way it looked in the very beginning. Yeah, you remember how hard that dough actually was and how hard it was to get that little final bit of flour in. Um, now the flour has hydrated completely, and it's actually a really nice extensible dough. It does feel good. All right. So this board is a little slippy. Not the easiest for cutting them on, actually. And we'll see how evenly this. And so if you are, like, a fuss budget and really precise, each one of these is about 2.5 ounces. That's how much it makes. And these are kind of um, what I like to call ordinary size bagels. They're not huge, and they're not mini bagels. They're just enough to have maybe one or two 
for breakfast um, with some cream cheese. And this motion that I'm doing, you just sort of stick the sticky side of the dough down on the table. You put your hand over it like a cup and you just sort of wiggle your hand around, keeping the heel of your hand down on the board. And you can feel it start to pull together in a nice tight little round. And you'll get it, you'll feel it immediately after you do one or two. It's not hard at all, it's just like going back to when you were a kid and you played with Play-Doh. And then if you look at it, it's got this little seam on the bottom. You can just pinch that shut or leave it, it doesn't actually make that much difference. And working on wood makes it easier. Anytime you're forming dough, if you're on wood, it just doesn't stick quite as badly as yeah. in other places. The only thing that, 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 that is the slightest bit difficult is to just find the stickiest part on the dough and stick it to the board because that's what actually sort of suctions it down onto the board and makes it spin around on its own axis and make a little ball. And there are people who can do this with both hands. I've actually, for some reason, just never been that coordinated. I just do really well with one hand. Um, I want to try it. I'm just not sure. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think I have the same motion as you. No, because you're right. No, it's harder to... I think I have to put more pressure on the... Yeah, you're, I'm bearing down pretty hard. Yeah. yeah, you do have to bear down really hard on this because it's not, it's not sticky at all. You didn't find your sticky spot. Mine's not pretty. No. See, I think I'd rather do it with two hands, too. All right, I'm going to try it on my board. <laughs> <laughs> but my board's moving around. I'm used to doing the two hands at work. You got to move. No, your board's not sticky. You need to stick your board. Yeah, okay. That is not easy, is it? To get it perfect yeah. like you. The board is a little flower. Flowery. But I mean, do I have to have it completely as perfect as those? You don't. Because um, we're just going to make little rings in a minute. You are. It sort of helps the rings hold a nice shape. Is the only reason that you make the little nice little skin on the so, ball. So you're forming a skin to kind of mm -hmm. let it mm -hmm. get strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you get one that's been sort of Damaged. mangled, mangled, <laughs> you can just sort of fold it over itself, which actually makes it have a little sticky bottom, and then it'll come back. So the pressure is really key, and then using your fingers to push it round. Yeah, and, and if you don't have if you don't have a sticky spot, around. you can always just break open the dough ball so that there is a sticky spot too. Okay, that was getting better. That one is better. So they're not quite as evenly shaped if I had scaled them, but they're close enough. Some people like little bagels anyway. Yeah, they'll be fine. They just have to be reasonably close to the same size so they'll all cook in the same amount of time. But these are fine. So now we just cover them and we let them sit there for five minutes. Our little dough balls have been sitting here um, relaxing for about five minutes, and now we are actually going to form them into the bagels. This is like the exciting this part. This is the fun part. So um, I have a sheet pan here, this is, or you can just have a regular like cookie baking sheet. Something with sides is kind of nice. And I'm just going to sprinkle this with semolina flour. And if you don't have semolina flour, um, fine cornmeal is just fine. I've used both for this, and either one works just fine. And all it does is keeps the bagel from um, sticking to the bottom of the pan, and it also keeps the bagel from sticking when you actually transfer it to the baking sheet or the baking stone in the oven. And so you take a bagel, you put your thumbs through the middle, thumbs through the middle. Then you just pretend like you're a little kid and you're working with Play-Doh and you just are sort of slightly stretching it in it. When I get the hole about that big, I switch to my, two, my index finger and the next big finger and you're just sort of going around and around and you can kind of twist it around as you're going there and your goal is to get the hole to be between an inch and a half and two inches and when you put it down on the pan it's going to kind of close back up a little bit but that's your goal so there you go and um, if you have little kids this would be a great Thing to bring them in at this point because I can't imagine that there aren't any little kids in the entire world who would not like to do this part. And then once we get them all formed and on the pan, we're just going to cover it back up with our plastic wrap. And we're going to let it rise on the counter 
for roughly an hour. And it's pretty warm in here, so these probably won't have to go quite an hour. But um, they're basically going to um, hold the dent when you poke them. So depending on how warm your kitchen is, that may take a little longer or a little less time. And it's gonna, you're going to let them rise in a relatively warm spot in your kitchen. Um, not steaming hot, not like 80 degrees, not super cold, not like 60, ideally right around you know 70 degrees. But if you just watch them, um, you can have some variability with your temperature. So the moment of truth has finally come. We've uh, shaped our bagels this morning. We've had them rising on the counter on their sheet pan for about an hour, and they're all nice and poofy now. So we have a pot of uh, boiling water. It's about four inches of water. It's at um, a gentle boil. It shouldn't be a really, really hard boil. And um, this pot will hold about six bagels at a time. So we're just going to pick them up and gently drop them into the water. You can tell if they are um, ready to go because they will either float immediately or they'll sink to the bottom and they'll pop back up within 15 seconds. So these are completely ready to go. And you're going to set a timer and you're going to cook them one minute. I like to use this little spoon. I find it just a round handled wooden spoon is the easiest thing to use. You just flip them over and you set it for one more minute. A couple seconds here. So our bagels have cooked for a minute on each side, and I just take them out with the little handle, and you can put them right back on the same pan. Now, so I'm going to put on some toppings. I've got poppy seeds and salt, kosher salt, really coarse, big grains of salt for the tops, and also some um, dried onion that we've actually soaked in water so it won't burn immediately and it'll stick better to the tops of the onions. You can also use sesame seeds, just whatever your favorite flavor seeds are. And I'm gonna do that while Lisa gets the next batch into the, the pot of boiling water. Do these go in now or you want yes, to? Yes, I'm okay. going to put those in uh, and I'll just take them from right there. Okay. So inside the oven, we have a preheated pizza stone. You could also just put these on a preheated sheet pan. And how long for the bagels? The bagels go 14. We need to check our bagels. First batch we put in on the pizza stone. Looks like they are really pretty close. I might give them one more minute just to get them really nice and toasty. I like to loosen them up just so they're easy to get off. But you can see they've got really nice brown color. Tiny bit more. Extra minute. And these are done. Those are some nice looking bagels. That's an especially nice one. So although it took about, oh, 24 hours to get these completely to rise and bake, they're completely worth it as you can, I think you can detect that just in looking at the texture in these bagels. So the recipe makes a dozen. You may not want to share with people. It depends on how big your family is. And all they need is maybe a little bit of cream cheese or nothing. They're good just as they are.